Hello everyone, my name is Jamie McQuaid from Magnet Forensics and today we have another video uh, as part of the Magnet at Work series. So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about standard images and hash lists. Most of you who have worked in uh, an enterprise setting has I've probably used standard or gold images and created hash sets from those to identify known good files. So quite often in an enterprise setting, IT departments will have gold images or standard images, whatever they want to call them, and use those to deploy across the entire organization the same standard software for all uh, employees. Now, you may have a few gold images across your organization, depending on the size and the roles. Um, you know, the, the developers might might not need the same software as somebody in the sales or marketing department. So you might have a few of those, but the process is the same. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically mount uh, a standard gold image uh, on our system here. We're going to hash all the files for it, and then we're going to load that uh, hash list into Axiom. And that can be our known good hash set uh, or, or hash set of known good files that we could use in our investigation to minimize the noise and the non-relevant things that we might want to uh, exclude from our investigation. So first up, I've got a, a, a gold image here that I'm going to use. Mine here is a Windows 10. It's a you're running 1809 uh, developer build, so it's got stuff like Visual Studios in it and stuff like that. But you'll notice it's a .tib file. This is from our Cronus uh, True Image. Now you may see .tib files, you may see ISO files. The the process is the same. We're gonna we're gonna try to mount it and then hash all the files for it. Um, so mounting might be your uh, your biggest challenge depending on the format that your IT department uses. Uh, if it's an ISO file, that's pretty straightforward, easy to use. You can use either the native Windows to mount it or uh, FDK Imager will mount those just fine for you. For the TIB files, unfortunately, it's a unique proprietary format, so you have to install our Cronus. Um, hopefully, the IT department has a copy of it for you if they're the ones using it and they can give it to you. And so what we're going to do to mount this one is we're going to go in, right click, and because I've got mine installed, it's already got uh, an option here for it. So I'm going to just choose Mount. It'll take a second to mount it here, and we can see we've got uh, some options here. Here's the uh, uh, the partitions uh, it will mount for us. Uh, really, all I need is this one right here, uh, which will mount as H. I can uncheck these because I don't really need the system or the recovery or anything like that. So we'll just do the H and hit proceed. Okay, and it's all complete. Uh, it's assigned the drive loaders. We can hit OK. Uh, we can double check by going in and opening up the new Explorer window. And we'll go to this PC. And we can see there's an H drive there. So perfect. Uh, I've got my other drives, and this is the, the mounted uh, TIB file right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to hash all the files in here. Well, you could use a forensics tool to do that, or if uh, you're comfortable enough with it, PowerShell is a great way to do that. So um, I've opened up PowerShell as an administrator here. We've got it and I will provide you with a very quick, easy way to create a hash list. So what I'll do is I'll just paste that in there because I didn't want to mess up typing it all up. There we go. So basically what that'll do is it'll take the H drive, it'll do a recursive listing of all the files in it. It will do, give me an MD5 hash of all of those files, each unique Hile. You, you don't need duplicate ones, so we'll eliminate the du duplicates, and then it'll create a, a text file of those hashes there. That's an easier way to read it. You can see hash, hash set underscore ignorables.txt. So basically that's gonna create a text file for all of our hashes. I'll hit enter. And basically what it'll do is it'll go through and start creating those hashes. Now you may, as it goes through here, uh, it'll take some time. So I'm going to cut the video and uh, jump right to the end. Um, you may get a few errors where it wasn't able to hash those files. That's perfectly normal, uh, depending on uh, what you've mounted and what you've loaded in. It might uh, error on anything that's got a file size of zero and it, it can't actually, or something that can't actually be hashed. Um, but uh, otherwise you should get a, a nice list of uh, ignorable files here. So we'll, uh, we'll let it finish here and uh, I'll show you the results results on the other side. Okay, and our hash set is completed, and uh, we can see here we've got our, our hash set. If I open that up with uh, Notepad++, uh, we can take a quick look, but really all it is is a whole bunch of MD5 hashes. Um, now, these are known good files, and what we want to do now is take that list and load it in as a hash set into Axiom. So let's uh, let's close that down, minimize everything here, and I've got Axiom up and running here, Axiom process. I've got an image, uh, Windows 10 PC already loaded in here, ready to go. So what we can do is 
go to the processing details and go calculate hash values. You need to uh, start run the actual hashing. Um, you can see there's the MD5 hashing there and uh, you can turn on other types, but I chose MD5, so MD5 is the one we've got selected here. And you can load your hash set into two places, uh, tag files with matching hash values or ignore non-relevant ones. If you wanted to just identify the matches, this is where you would want to uh, identify them and tag them as whatever you want. Um, here, we're gonna ignore non-relevant files. These are good for white lists and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is add, click add file. We're gonna go to my desktop here and we'll go to hash sets. Where is it here? it is and there's that ignorables file we load it in here and it'll load those in i think there's about 16 yeah there we go um so hash that's loaded in there ready to go that's going to be persistent between my uh my cases i can just choose to include or exclude it depending on the uh, uh the image i'm scanning or the uh the, the case i'm working and uh, we can hit go and process the evidence from there it'll process everything while excluding any files that match on those hash files um so it's it will minimize the amount of artifacts the extra noise that you would get and allow you to uh, focus on just what user has changed or anything malicious or anything like that so um really helpful way to narrow the scope of your investigation and get rid of some of that extra noise. That's everything in the video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.